So, Christoph, you've been using Crystal View for a while yet. We've both had it in the departments. So, what's your initial impression? I think it's a really interesting technique. We're now beginning to see anatomical structures in the way that uh, I haven't seen before with other yeah. techniques. How exactly that translates through into prognosis giving and diagnosis, I'm not sure, but we are determined to learn. It's this issue of getting pretty pictures sometimes, but actually, can you make the pretty picture translate yes. into actually yes. changing clinical management? It's always a problem, isn't you it? You know, that, that's a really important point because um, I have deliberately said to my team, no pretty pictures of faces. Yes. Okay, so this is about trying to improve diagnosis uh, and understanding and actually showing the parents because often parents don't understand uh, what a particular problem uh, is and if you can show them it suddenly transforms the whole thing for them. I mean I remember when I first got Christopher and we looked in early pregnancy and I remember showing you this picture for example. Yes. I don't know if the yes. crew can see this yeah. but really it was quite remarkable. Yes. You know, and I think there was a, a tendency to say you can sort of see things earlier uh, with Christopher, maybe, because we saw very clear structures in early pregnancy, and I think it's perhaps a bit earlier to get good images in early pregnancy as opposed to later pregnancy. Do you find that's your experience well, at the moment? When I saw these images uh, from your team a month or two ago, I thought, you know, we're not getting that sort of image, uh, and how do we get it? And it's taken quite a lot of work in acquisition mm -hmm. and uh, playing with the controls to get the sort of image that we're now happy with, seeing midline brain structures, seeing the palate, but we can do it. But there's no doubt that there's a, more of a challenge later in gestation. Because well, I remember when you were Stuart Campbell did the original reverse... The reverse face view, yes. As a yes. clearly not my thing. Yes. But it seems to me this was a lot easier to acquire. Even I can acquire this image as a gynecologist with virtually a very simple sweep. So that's quite interesting. But if you look at other applications later in pregnancy, neurosynology, if you like, is quite difficult. Mm. Well, I've been impressed by pictures of um, the ribs and, and skeletal images seem to me to be quite novel. I don't know whether that's what your experience is or well, whether you I, think that might be where this real this application yeah, really comes into. Yeah, well, I've been enough. using di different sorts of 3D technology for, for, for many years, and I can honestly tell you I haven't been able to get views of the ribs and the skeleton and spine in the way I've been able to recently. Now, again, I don't know quite how that translates to our prognostication because, to be quite frank, I haven't seen exactly what I expected mm. in certain pathological cases, and it may mean that we need to go back and understand the anatomy. Mm. Certainly in the baby's brain, we are seeing the baby's brain in a way we hadn't before, and I'm going back to my cross-sectional anatomy books to try and understand it. But I guess that's the same for you in the first trimester well, because you're going to be seeing... Because my feeling is we're going to have to move everything earlier. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I certainly have gone back to sort of the embryology books with yes. my, my fellow to say, right, we need to understand this because we're actually seeing the images. So, yes. But we have to show clinical utility. As I said, yes. I think it's really important with the new technology that you do clinical research yes. to show that it actually makes a difference because that's actually what it's all about. I mean, I, I just wondered, have you actually had a chance to talk to anyone else about it? Have you sort of shared images with any yeah, colleagues? Uh, have you got any, any feedback from other people about, about the uh, crystal view? So for the last two months, I've been working very closely with... Uh, Dr. Andrea Dallasta, who deserves acknowledgement because he spent hours and hours on mm. getting good images. And we've immersed ourselves so much in those images, I think we've uh, subjectively, we can't judge them anymore. So I got together a panel of a dozen experts throughout Europe mm. and I've been emailing the them. Like uh, some from the truffle, the truffle group and the, some, the some from elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the usual suspects who've uh, very obligingly looked at the images and have gone, given constructively critical comments. Yes. And in certain cases they say, yeah, these are wonderful images. But where? We, Did you find it the same with you as was skeletal? Yeah, skeletal. Views. So the hands, the spine, um, they like the brain images. But when I talked about sulcation, well, we have no proper reference standard for assessing sulcation on ultrasound, so we've got a lot of work to do there. Yeah. I mean, we're interested in gynaecology. I mean, obviously, you've seen some of the images of gynae. And again, you can have uh, a difference in the quality of the image, but you actually have to show, for example, does it improve the sensitivity and specificity for diagnosis yes. of cancer? We yes. don't have that data. Yeah. But does it seem to give very beautiful images of solid populations in cysts? Does it give us more information about the myometrium? I think it probably does, but again, we need to do big clinical studies to demonstrate utility. So we have to move beyond what are undoubtedly beautiful pictures into actually showing that it makes a difference in terms of clinical management. I think that's where we feel in yeah, gynecology. I, I suspect you think yeah, the same. I could could completely agree. I'm going to uh, try and target several areas, so CNS, uh, face and facial morphology, particularly from the point of view of cleft. Uh, and also skeletal dysplasias, mm. uh, because that's where I think we'll be able to see immediately, if uh, relatively soon, if we're getting prognostic, firstly prognostic information and secondly diagnostic information. You've got clear endpoints. Yes. 
So, are you going to do clinical studies? Do, are you going to have data? When's that going to happen? Well, we, 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 we hope to. This is an area we're embarking on. Um, it's going to take six or 12 months before we get anything meaningful, I think. Mm. I suspect the same for you. Well, absolutely right. I think I've got things to do now, so okay. leave it at that. Thank you. <laughs>